Don't go away because Art Zone is about to begin. Right, old timey public domain cartoon character? Hi there and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy here at Georgetown Stables and we've got an excellent mix of local art for you this week. Take a look. The mind of an animator. What they are looking for is people who can act and emote and bring characters to life. Intricate art books. Jimi Hendrix at NAMM. Peggy P's calendar. the soul rock groove of James Anaya and The Current. We'll begin with a look inside the fun, creative, and talented mind of a local animator, Don Norton. My name is Don Norton, and I'm an animator, motion graphic designer, and illustrator. My background is in theater, and I have a degree in theater and a degree in art. After I graduated, I didn't have a job that <laughs> paid. But I ended up reading an article about 3D animators, and what they are looking for is people who can act and emote and bring characters to life. And just a light bulb went off. One of the project that was a highlight for me was my, oh my. doing Digital Dave for the Seattle Mariners. I also got to be involved in the creation of the hydroplane races when the orca comes out. That was me. It's just really surreal to see like 40,000 people cheering for your animations. My favorite thing is just creating these cute, fun, joyful characters. But sometimes I wonder, like, should I be doing something more, something more meaningful? And so that's why Big Sonia was such a great project. A few years ago, Todd Soliday and his wife, Leah, were starting to do a documentary about Leah's grandmother, Sonia Wachowski, who survived the Holocaust. You live with it all your life, and you can never forget. When Sonia was 13, um, the Nazis came into her town and they were gonna take him away. And so it just, it seemed weird that Todd would want me to do animations when that was such a serious subject, but he trusted me and through his direction and his vision, we created these animations that express her childhood and what she went through. A couple of the most impactful scenes was the invasion, where the cars come up to take the Jews away. There's the guards and there's the dogs, and there's Sonia and her mom, and the train opens up. I had it red in the background to really be shocking, and there's these silhouettes of the people, the Jews, and it's just very shocking. Also, those invasion scenes where the guards come with the dogs and um, she is kneeling in the front of her house and the moment that I really tried to capture was Sonia. And I had her turn to her mom and just kind of bury herself into her mom. It's a really sad subject. It's really emotional. Um, and so I, I let myself, like, get absorbed in it.
Yeah, sometimes projects can just get too much. When I am at that point, I go outside for a run. I'm training for my 14th marathon right now. I just love running because when I'm running, just things will pop in, like different characters or different illustrations I want to do. And I don't know, it's a great way to think but not think. <laughs> One of the things that makes me most happy are dachshunds. Like when I see one, when I'm out running, if I see one, I'm like, oh, it's dachshund, it's a good day. Like it's a good run. And I oftentimes like determine how great my run is by how many dachshunds I see. I often try to sneak them in my animations if I can. <laughs> yes, and it just makes me happy. And so it makes me more excited about animating. I love what I do, that I get to like create things and animate things and make people happy or educate people and um, that I get to do it from my home with my cat. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> See more of Dawn's work on her Vimeo page. Also, my interview with the creators of Big Sonia, the documentary film featuring Dawn's animation, is on our homepage. An intriguing exhibit recently opened at Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. It's called Open Sesame, the magic of artists' books revealed, and we hopped a ferry across Puget Sound to check out these beautiful works up close and personal. Well, I am in the upper chamber of the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, also known as BIMA, and I'm with the illustrious founder, Cynthia Sears. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. We're so happy to be here. We're delighted to have you here. Now, before diving into this exhibit, I want our viewers to know that you were the driving force behind this museum. Your yes. vision, your determination, this wouldn't exist without you. And yes. the mission is kind of local and regional artists that you show their work. Right. Absolutely. And that's a real gift to the community. So yeah. big kudos to you, because oh, that's thank you. pretty great. Um, so let's talk about the new show, Open Sesame, The Magic of yeah. Artists' Books Revealed. Um, we were talking before uh, yeah. this, and I mentioned that when I heard that phrase, artists' book, books, I thought of a big coffee table, hardbound book about um, artists' work. But that yes. is not at all what it is. So let's start with a very basic first question. What are artists' books? That is a question that just about every book artist <laughs> talks about, argues about, mm. um, refuses to um, accept somebody else's definition. <laughs> I can only give you my definition Perfect. for my collection. Yeah. OK. An artist's book is a three-dimensional work of art mm -hmm. that delivers its message or tells its story over time the way a book does. Mm -hmm. Time is essential for me. If you can look at something and understand what it is mm -hmm. completely just at one look, that all at onceness means it's not an artist's it's book. An artist book. So it has to be over time and usually with the agency of a person doing something, turning a page, pulling a lever, mm -hmm. putting together a puzzle, mm -hmm unmaking a bed, mm -hmm. making it up again. I know there are like 150-ish um, pieces, yes. right? Most of these are the permanent collection yes. of the museum. And that permanent collection, where did that come from? That is my collection that is now being made over to the museum. Oh, so like a gift or a giving it over? Is a, it is totally and, and a how gift. How many total artist books do you have in your collection? It's something over 1,800. Ish. <laughs> ish. I love yeah. the ish. When, when did you get enamored, and what is it about artist books that you now you have, you know, close to 2,000? It is the most original, inventive, nimble, creative, exciting form of art for me. Yeah. It's very personal. 
It allows the bookmaker to have direct communication. That they're whispering in your ear. I mean, it's really an intimate form. Would you tell, just tell me about that, the little red box artist book, if you could tell me about that. Yes, that's called Ossuary, mm -hmm. and it's a little book object that opens in two layers, and it is filled with paper and tiny replicas of human bones. And the material on the paper is an account of all the soldiers' lives lost in the Iraq War. And it is very difficult to read. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, mean it's it, literally difficult to read, the, uh, the black on the dark. Red. Exactly. And that was her purpose, that, that you need to make a huge effort to get this information. Mm -hmm. It is not just there. And it is also fading mm -hmm. um, from the paper as it does from our, our, memories, our memory and, and our history. awareness. Right. Anyway. Um, uh, so I assume that the artists represented in the show, they, they also work in a lot of other mediums. Is that right? Some do, um, mostly print related, mm -hmm. but there are some book artists that are only book artists. But, but they're yeah. using so many different yes. skills. I mean, yes. let's list them yeah. off. There's collage, there's, there's drawing, there's printing. There is embroidery. One woman does not like her hair when it has fallen from her, mm -hmm. and she has written a book in Chinese about her dislike of the hair using the hair as the letters. So, and it's, it looks like print. Yeah. It's beautifully done, but it's all made out of hair. I love the detail of that. I yeah. love the, yeah. the obsessive quality of that. Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, a lot of these books, like you said, are um, heavy, and there's also yeah. things that aren't as heavy, like that matchbook. The matchbook, yeah. which was um, <laughs> created some years ago by one of the co-curators of this show, um, she printed a a little history of her problems with relationships, <laughs> with matches. Yes. She took actual matches, disassembled them, ran them through the printing machine, and printed a story that as you use each match, it changes. Very clever. So I know you don't play favorites. Yeah. You love all of them. These are all of your children. But if you had to mention one or two, they're like, well, you know what? Those two are, are quite, you know, uh, unique or interesting. I mean, they're all unique. C could you? Could you name check any? I, you know, I do want to tell about one book that is actually a summer hat. Hmm. It looks like a straw hat, but what would be the straw is a strip of paper with printing on it. And it contains every possible insult, derogatory <laughs> term, or whatever, about women and their sexuality. Oh my god. And That's powerful. It is really powerful. I to, love the idea of it. It's, not, it's, it's protecting you. you. It's kind of like, so, eh. <laughs> but, it, but, but you can, my, my interpretation of it is that it's protecting women's brains yes. from that coming in. That's, oh, yes. that's so smart. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's, I need to get a copy. I need one of those. <laughs> exactly. And that's, that is done by um, the artist who did this oh, man. large this piece. Shadow yes. yes. What do you hope people will take away from this show who are going to come see Open Sesame? <sighs> Just joy in the form and the possibilities. I would like them to encourage their children to make their own books. And children love this oh, as yeah. a form. Oh, I bet. They must yeah. flip out. Yeah. You keep, yeah. have to work hard to keep and their the, hands off it? <laughs> <laughs> that Well, we will have a petting zoo here. <laughs> so, oh, I love um, that. A petting zoo book, a petting book, artist book zoo. Exactly right. Well, this is terrific. Thank you so much You're for, so for talking to us about it and for having this amazing collection. So Open Sesame, The Magic of Artist Books Revealed, runs now through June 9th at Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, museum and location hours and ferry schedule is on the BEMA website. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you, man. Nancy. It's something. Yeah, yeah, this is great. Great. There's still time to experience Bold as Love, Jimi Hendrix at Home, the current exhibit at the Northwest African American Museum. And we thought who better to show you around than a visitor we met opening night who could barely contain her excitement. Okay, 
I want to tell you right now, this exhibit has completely blown me away. Oh my. I myself am a child of the 60s, so I thought I knew everything there was to know about Jimi Hendrix. But this exhibit has shown me really what he has done in terms of everything he's influenced. My goodness, I didn't know that he was a visual artist. You're way ahead of your time with this dragon. He created, I mean, all those drawings. Wow. <laughs> Uh, his influence on fashion. My goodness, we're still wearing this fashion now. He put Seattle on the map. And I love the fact that he played with all these different bands and he just rose to the top. He was fierce. He did his own style when nobody else would do it. When people put him down for it, he just kept going. I am bursting with pride just to know this family because I'm close with the family, with his sister, Janie in particular. Happy, happy, happy. But to know all of this, after I've known her for all these years, I'm so excited, I don't know what to do. I mean, this, people need to know this about Jimmy. Uh, not just, you know, the killer guitarist that he was. There was so much more dimension to this man. This is gonna stay with me a long time. A long time. I am absolutely incredulous about what this man really has brought to our community. And so I'm hoping that everybody, especially music lovers, art lovers, know this part of Jimi Hendrix. You belong to the world, to the universe. I know I am a lot more enriched because of it. Bold as Love, Jimi Hendrix at Home runs through May 5th at the Northwest African American Museum. Nice noodling. Beautiful. Good noodling. Well, really good noodling. We have a yeah. terrific band this week, James and Naya and The Current. Woo! And this is the great James. I'm James. Mighty James. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, meet everyone and then we'll have Where a little chit chat. Uh, okay, we're going over here. There's a lot of lovely faces here. Yes. Uh, we have Gordon on saxophone. Hey, Gordon. We have Jason on trombone. Two loves people, by yes, the way. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have Alec on guitar, the noodler. <laughs> Uh, we got Alex in the back there on the drums. Hey, Alex. We have Sam uh, on background vocals and Stacy as well. And we know Stacy from Art Zone as well. She's been on before. Very lovely, and over talented here, ladies. On the keys. When, uh, on the keys, we have John Franco Hi, John. Uh, on the keys. And my good pal, Craig Kern on bass. Craig, and then of course you. Well, it's great yeah. to have you all here. Yeah, now, you nice. and I connected through, um, it was Instagram, I think. It was. You, you, you tagged? Us? Yeah, I had uh, tagged you on a, a new music a new video, music video and you, so we looked at the video, and our, the uh, AZ crew, we flipped. It was oh, so good. So sweet. Love That's that cool car in it. Yeah. Are a lot of, is anyone here in the in the video? In the in the video, yeah. So my my core band, Stacy, Sam, yeah. they were in the video. Yeah, yeah, pretty much everybody except for those, those guys. Over they were there. rehearsing somebody else. Yeah, has. yeah, they're they're busy guys. Um, now you describe or self-described, I think, uh, you as your sound soul slash rock and roll singer songwriter who likes to push the boundaries of genres? We like to do that sometimes. What does that mean? How do you define that? Well, uh, I, I kind of started out uh, singer-songwriter, acoustic type mm -hmm. stuff and got together with with Craig back in the day and just the sound kind of has evolved mm -hmm. over time as it does when you get other brains involved. Right. Um, and so yeah, you, you hear a little bit of soul, a little bit of rock and roll and I still have my roots as a, you know acoustic singer-songwriter. Right. And, and you, you do, so there's a nine piece you play with, you have a five piece, mm -hmm. nine piece here obviously, mm -hmm. and you do solo. Do you have a, like acoustic solo, do you have a preference or, or what's, is it harder to do group versus just yourself? I'd say the hardest part about playing with a group this size is getting everybody kind of in the same room. Yeah. Everybody's got so many schedules, especially since a lot of these guys are in, in different bands. Yeah. Right. And so it's just like, oh, here's my guitar, plug it in, boom, yeah. there we go. Right, That's right, easy. the simplicity so, of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've got such a, a great sound and I know you're gonna play us a couple of songs. And yeah. the first one, I think is the new single. It is. It's Jimmy called... Dream On. Correct. Okay, and which yeah. is also the music video. Yeah. Um, are we ready? Current, the current. Are you ready? Let's you guys do it. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, James and I and the, the current. current. Thanks, guys.
a time when I was just a young boy Long go along with the dreams of my younger days Now the world has since tried to take that away And it can if you let it, resistance always finds a way well, Ideas, but how can you really know? Well, don't hate what you don't understand now. I'll but you be you, and I'll be a better man now. live on Friday, April 5th at the Central Saloon in Pioneer Square. Download the new single, Jimmy Dream On, from his Bandcamp page, iTunes, or Spotify, and watch the Jimmy Dream On music video on YouTube. Hi, I'm Peggy Piacenza, and I'm curating this week's calendar of events. We'll start out with On the Board's upcoming show with artist Keon Gaskin, Lavender, a self-portrait. Gaskin's work is described as somewhere between performance art, black social dance, sound, and theater, and examines the relationship between the audience and the artist. Lavender, a self-portrait, explores how we frame and present ourselves. This is a site-specific work and will be performed at Oxbow Gallery in Georgetown. March 22nd through the 24th. Next up, Caught, the newest play at Intamon Theater, centers around the work of a fictional, legendary Chinese rebel artist who was imprisoned for a single work of art. Now attending an art gallery's retrospective of his work, he shares the details of his ordeal. Nothing is as it first appears in this exploration of truth, art, social justice, and cultural appropriation now through March 30th at 12th Avenue Arts. Let's head over to the Seattle Art Museum where they're presenting Jeffrey Gibson, Like a Hammer. This contemporary artist draws from diverse influences, including abstraction, indigenous art, queer aesthetics, and pop culture, 
to create an exhibit of over 65 works. From geometric paintings on rawhide and canvas to its eye-popping beaded punching bags. Take in its expert craft now through May 12th. And I'm excited to tell you about my work, Sweet Rotten Sweet, at Bonfire Gallery. This piece takes material from my recent work, The Event, into a new realm of video installation and gallery performance. It's a communal ritual that examines what it means to see and be seen, and to bear witness to the passage of time. Through dance and performance, I try and illuminate the human struggle to find meaning within an absurd world. You can see the exhibit now through March 31st and catch the live performances March 16th through the 30th. Thanks, Peggy. Now, I recently learned from my groovy millennial friend, Abby Lindsay, about a unique way to experience live music. It's through So Far Sounds, which is an international online concert hub that started in London and now books shows in 428 cities around the world, including Seattle. Here's how it works. You log on to the website, scroll through available concert dates in the city you're interested in. You can even specify the neighborhood. Find a date that works and click attend. Now this gets your name into a lottery for tickets and if your name is chosen, you'll get an email a few days before the show with instructions on how to buy tickets. The day before the show, you'll be sent the address of the venue and then all you have to do is show up at the appointed time. Now here's the hook. You won't know until you get to the venue who you're going to see, which is obviously a risk because you might not like the artist. On the other hand, you might end up discovering someone great who you never would have heard about otherwise. It's a really cool concept. I think it's worth the gamble. And you can check it out for yourself at SoFarSounds.com. And that is it for us. A big thanks to Georgetown Stables and to all of our wonderful guests, and of course to you for tuning in. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. I see. Can't you tell her? Tell her.